What's going on, everybody? I am back to break down this five-game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. I'm going to be giving you guys the top plays to get you in that green cash line on both websites tonight. As always, don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my lock of the night, fan favorite segment on the channel, the guy that I'm picking a lock in my lineups on both DraftKings and FanDuel. And if you haven't signed up for Prize Picks, Prize Picks is the sponsor of this program. I've been giving out daily picks over there. Use that promo code KJKDFS to receive an instant match deposit up to $100. Again, that is code KJKDFS. Get that free money. Start locking in those Prize Picks picks. I'll be coming out with a video later on for that. And uh, lastly, if you're getting serious about NBA DFS, I would highly recommend my NBA DFS premium package. We'll talk about that more at the end of the video, but patreon.com slash KJK underscore DFS. I'll be rolling out MLB packages as well. MLB starting up next week, so you'll definitely want to be uh, hopping in over there for that as well. I can promise you that much. I'm uh, going to have some good content going on for MLB. So um, without further ado, just a quick shout out to my current Patreon members. Really does mean a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support, guys. I want to put your names up, give you a shout out. And uh, to anyone that joins today, I'll make sure I get your name up there on the graphic as well. So, uh, you know, you get that shout out going forward. So... All right, guys, let's talk about it. Let's get into the game-by-game -game breakdown, as always. Uh, we're going to start on DraftKings, get an overall feel for the slate, and then we'll talk about FanDuel second uh, and talk about some pricing discrepancies, all that fun stuff, maybe some differences between the, the salaries on both websites. So uh, Philadelphia taking on Detroit is the first game on the slate. comes with a 223.5 over under. It's a 10-point spread in favor of the Philadelphia 76ers. So Philadelphia expected to win this one very easily, as expected. The Detroit Pistons are not good. Uh, they're dealing with some injuries. They're just not good as is. And it wouldn't be surprising to see maybe one of the studs on uh, Philadelphia rest. I mean, for no other reason, just then the Detroit Pistons aren't really that great and they could maybe use a day's rest. But uh, other than that, um, we're expecting everyone to be a full go. Like I said, probably going to be a pretty easy win for the uh, Philadelphia side. Uh, but it's going to be a great matchup to be targeting some Joel Embiid in this one. The Detroit Pistons are not good defensively. Looking at my defensive half-court putbacks tool over here at my premium content sheets, you can see that the Detroit Pistons overall now ranking out as one of the bottom uh, teams in the league defensively. 24th overall in points per possession rank, 27th in half-court points per play rank, 27th in offensive rebounding percentage given up as well, and uh, 14th in putbacks. So Obviously, Joel Embiid, fantastic fantasy point per minute producer. It's just a matter of whether the game stays close. Even if it doesn't, though, I have a ten, I have a feeling that it's going to be mostly Joel Embiid carrying the load, uh, creating this blowout. Unless, of course, you know, we see James Harden, um, I'm sorry, Joel Embiid rest, and then, of course, James Harden is going to be the one that would take on all of that usage. So certainly keep your eyes on that. Once again, just kind of speculating. Maybe they give one of those guys a rest. Uh, Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey. Are the secondary options? Tobias Harris continues to be priced very, very friendly. So if you want to target him, I don't think you're crazy at all. Continues to grade out as a very good play in my projection model. Uh, night in and night out, he's putting up 0.97 DraftKings points per minute on the season. Projected to play in the mid 30s. That's automatically going to make him look like he's a uh, pretty good play here. So uh, going over to the Detroit side in this one, it continues to be the same candidates really. If the game stays close, it's going to be Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bay, Marvin Bagley. Uh, those three are really the ones you're looking to lock in on the for the most part. If it doesn't stay close, then you could be looking to some guys at the bench like a Kelly Olenek, a Frank Jackson, a Killian Hayes uh, to maybe get some more run in a blowout. Um, my projection model seems to always really like going to a Kelly Olenek just because he produces at such a high rate. 1.1 DraftKings points run out in the season. I've only got him projected to play 20 minutes in this one, and he still looks like a pretty great uh, point per dollar play. Obviously, the upside can be hindered based upon the minutes, but he's only 3.5 if he's able to get some more minutes. And then uh, the other guy, like I said, Frank Jackson could possibly be a guy that you're possibly, you know, going to if you think the game's going to turn into a blowout. He's only 3-2. Uh, if he gets some extra run on this one, he could definitely surpass his price tag. Um, with his permanent production on the season, he's putting up 0.72 DraftKings points per minute. Just really, really cheap. But like I said, if the game stays close, it's fairly obvious you're going to. Um, we just talked about it, but it's Sadiq Bay, It's uh, it's Cade Cunningham. It's Isaiah Stewart. It's, it's those guys. And um, how much of a priority they are for us on the slate? Eh, I don't really think it's too much outside of like a Cade, Sadiq Bay, and uh, Marvin Bagley continues to be priced very friendly. So he was a guy I was really high on last time out. Unfortunately, he got some really bad foul trouble. I uh, picked up four fouls really quick in that one. Only played 24 minutes after we've seen him play in the mid 30s to upper 30s the last few times out. Expect a big bounce back game from him, I would say here. Uh, just a really good fantasy point producer, and the, and the price tag's cheap enough. So 
Milwaukee taking on Brooklyn. This game's going to be fantastic. It's a 239.5 over under 1.5 point spread in favor of the Brooklyn Nets. So expected to stay close. Expected to be really high up pace. It is on national television on TNT, which is always something I love to be looking at when it comes to these studs, man. And I think uh, all the top tier studs in this game are going to be priorities for us on the slate. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, uh, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday. I mean, I just think all of these guys could show out in this type of a game environment. Chris Middleton cheap enough at 7-8. Drew Holiday cheap enough at 8-3 um, to where I, I kind of think you could play all three of these guys for once, being, you know, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo. And then on the other side with Brooklyn, you have some great secondary options and an Andre Drummond and Seth Curry as well that are getting a decent amount of minutes. Andre Drummond continues to be priced very reasonably at 6K. A uh, very good fantasy point per minute producer. Bruce Brown, Seth Curry continue to get quite a bit of run. Bruce Brown for me is probably, you know, last on my list. I would much rather target Seth Curry. They're a little bit negatively correlated, so you're definitely going to want to play one of those guys uh, per lineup. And then you have Bobby Portis um, getting his minutes cut into now with Brooke Lopez being back. So he's definitely going to be a no for me. Brooke Lopez, as far as his upside in his minutes, we saw him play 29 minutes last time out. He's only 3'9". I certainly think he's pretty intriguing uh, in this type of a game environment at that price tag. I mean, I think the guy could get you there pretty easily. He Grades out is a pretty great play for me and my projection model, and I've only got him projected for 25 minutes right now. Uh, 0.84 DraftKings points for now on the season. Well, that's really good stuff, so going to him certainly do not hate it. But, uh, I mean, the payoff options in this game are just going to be fantastic, so that's really what I want to lock in on. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, one of the top payoff options on the slate. Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, fantastic. If you can possibly fit all three of these guys in a lineup, I would highly recommend you do so. Um, right now, I don't think we quite have the value enough to do that, uh, but you never know with NBA as the day goes on and we get some news, could become possible. Uh, I certainly do think I would prefer Kevin Durant over Kyrie Irving. Giannis Antetokounmpo, obviously, I prefer over all the other guys, but his price tag is up. Uh, but those are the top two options for me. And uh, I do think it's a rare, it's a rarity where you can play all these guys together. Like I said, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's a fast enough game environment, and I think they get enough minutes on TNT to where they could actually all get you there uh, at their price tag. So I, I don't hate that. Uh, typically, I'm always going to say that's negatively correlated. Still is, but I mean, look at the rest of the slate. This is a 239.5. Some of these other games, only a 222.5, 222, 223. So even though we're loading up on this game, um, I think it might I think it might be possible tonight. So ideally, probably just stick to two guys per team. But if there was ever time to do so, um, like I said, tonight could be the night. And then getting cute with like LaMarcus Aldridge off the bench and stuff like that. I don't think it's too necessary for me here. Uh, he does look like a decent play at 4-5. So if you want to go there, I don't hate it. But I mean, Seth Curry does look really good at 5K for me in my projections right now. Um, so, you know, pretty much everything we just talked about. But just, just going to be fantastic to be targeting this game. And I don't mind taking some shots on other guys. Uh, like a Pat Connaughton, for instance, at 3-7 on the Milwaukee Bucks. He does look like a pretty decent... Uh, point per dollar, you know, upside at his price tag type of play. 3.7, he's been playing right around 20 minutes a game. 0.78 DraftKings points if he gets hot from behind the arc. Um, but those are kind of just your tournament darts you're going to be mixing and, and filing in throughout your lineups. Cleveland taking on Atlanta. Next game on the slate comes in with a 2.22.5 over under. It's a 5.5 point spread in favor of the Atlanta Hawks. So it is expected to stay close. It's expected to be a decent game environment. Not nearly as good as the game we just talked about. But uh, there are some injuries that are going to open up some value. So there's no Evan Mobley. There's no Jarrett Allen on the Cleveland side, which obviously is a uh, big deal because now they're going to have to turn to some other guys to step up. And uh, Moses Brown got the start last time out. He's a guy that seems to always be a uh, DFS darling late in the season. I mean, the guy does produce at a pretty high rate on a permanent basis. He's only 3-2. He got 21 minutes last time out. I think that's enough minutes to, you know, to verify or like for him to be a valid play. And then Kevin Love becomes a much better play as well off the bench. He's just going to get more run, more usage um, overall with these guys being out, I would say. It was a little bit of a letdown last time out, but I wouldn't let that deter you from playing him. He went 3 for 10 from the field. Uh, he's just really efficient when he gets minutes, so even though he's not getting the most amount of minutes, he can still get you you know, 40-plus DraftKings points. That's how good he is on a permanent basis. So for me, I'm still willing to go there. And then, of course, Darius Garland, LeVert, Laurie Marketing, all going to be fantastic plays. This Atlanta defense is not good. Uh, these guys playing lots of minutes. So certainly willing to load up on them. And they're all grading out as a pretty great place for me and my projection model here. And then, like I said, we're looking at Atlanta as far as my defensive half-court and putbacks tool over here, my premium content sheets. They're 26th overall in the points per possession rank, 24th in half-court points per play rank. So, you know, they're right on the border of being a bottom five defense. I do not get scared off by them at all. And uh, loading up on some Darius Garland at 10-1. His price has come up, but 
but for good reason. I mean, the guy's been putting up 50-plus DraftKings points pretty consistently now. Uh, if you want to go to him, and then, like I said, Karis LeVert at 5'8", that, that is a very friendly price tag. The guy played 33 and 38 minutes um, the last couple times out. He can be a little bit inefficient, but if there was ever time for him to be efficient, it would be against this Atlanta Hawks defense. And uh, that's just really cheap, man, for the amount of upside that this guy can supply. So he looks like a fantastic play for me and my projection model. 1.01 draft piece points per minute. And I've got him projected for only like 29 minutes right now, and he's still looking like a fantastic play. So wouldn't be surprised to see that projection come up for me. But even then, just I'm projecting him on the modest side, and he still looks like a really great play. And running it back on the other side with Atlanta, uh, Danilo Gallinari, John Collins, both listed as questionable. Obviously, you know, some very big pieces of news. If indeed there is no um, Danilo Gallinari, I mean, DeAndre Hunter is a game time decision as well. So TLC could become a thing in this game environment if he's out as well. Um, but I think he's good to go. Okay, yeah, so now he's available. Okay, so the latest report is that he should be good to go. So he's going to play like 30 plus minutes. He's going to be a guy that has solidified minutes. The same can be said for Kevin Horder. If there's no Gallinari, uh, mixing and blending these guys is always something I have interest in. Bogdanovich, uh, chances are one of them is going to have an upside game at their price tag. They're all just priced very friendly. They all get lots of run. And then you could pair Trey, Trey Young with them if you'd like. Um, I don't think this is the best game environment for Trey Young. I would say it's a pace down spot, but um, anytime the game is going to expect it to stay close, you know, Trey Young becomes a viable candidate. It's just, is he a, a, as good of a pay up option as some of the other guys we talked about? You know, like a Kevin Durant, like a Joel Embiid, like a Giannis? I don't quite think so, so. Uh, LA Clippers taking on the Chicago Bulls. Next game on the slate comes in with a 222.5 over under. It's a 3.5 point spread in favor of the Chicago Bulls. So is expected to stay close, is expected to be up pace. Uh, Paul George is now back for the LA Clippers, which is a little concerning to me because uh, we weren't quite sure about his minutes, but he did play 31 minutes last time out and had a huge game, put up 57 DraftKings points. If that's going to be the case and he's going to play 30 plus minutes, he's automatically uh, viable. I, I, right away off the bat, which I wasn't quite expecting, to be honest with you. I don't know what to expect from him uh, returning off that injury, but he played a lot of minutes. And uh, if that's going to be the case going forward, he is going to certainly be a viable play. I've got him projected to play 34 minutes tonight. Maybe I'm a little bit high on that, but he played 31 in his first game back. I think he can get up to 34. And uh, putting up 1.3 DraftKings points per minute, you know, just a fantastic guy to be targeting. In a game that's expected to stay close against the Chicago Bulls team, that when you're looking at my defensive half court and putbacks tool, isn't exactly the top defense in the league. They're 18th overall in points for possession rank, 22nd in half court points for play rank. So uh, going to Paul George really makes sense. And with him coming back, it does definitely hurt some of the other guys. So like Reggie Jackson, Terrence Mann, uh, some of these other guys that we were looking to for quite some time, you know, they just become not nearly as intriguing of plays. Marcus Morris, for instance. The price tags have plummeted, so if you want to go there, but... I don't think it's too smart on a slate this large. I mean, I just think that Paul George is going to soak up so much of this usage now that these guys are all going to be overpriced for a little bit. Um, you know, you can mix and blend them. They all look like decent plays in my production model, like all the guys in the low 3K range. But um, it, all it is is mixing and matching these guys and hope you hit on one. Like you could get some Luke Kennard exposure in your tournament lineups. who's only 3'8". Maybe he comes off the bench and has a big game. Did play 35 minutes last time out, put up 24 DraftKings points. Um, I don't hate going to him, but you're looking to kind of catch lightning in a bottle from one of them off the bench. And then on the Chicago side, Zach Levine's listed as questionable. He is more so probable. He continues to be listed as questionable every single game dealing with an injury. I would expect him to be a full go. With him in, you have Levine, DeRozan, Vucevic. It's pretty simple. You pick one or two, and you don't play the rest because they are negatively correlated per lineup. And it can be a little bit unpredictable as to who has the biggest game, but uh, we know that Picking only two of these guys or one of them is the best way to go as far as actually capturing the upside you need from them in your tournament lineups. You can go to an Alex Caruso. You can go to a Desanmu as secondary plays. Uh, I think that they are priced reasonably enough and have enough usage taken away from them that where they don't have the upside for me in my tournament lineups. So for me, probably going to be a no. Uh, LA Lakers taking on the Utah Jazz, the second nationally televised game on the slate, but this one's not going to be nearly as entertaining. I have a feeling as a 12 and a half point spread in favor of the Utah Jazz. They're expected to win this game very easily as they should be. Uh, the LA Lakers continue to be without LeBron James, continue to be without Anthony Davis. Utah Jazz is one of the best defensive teams in the league. The LA Lakers are one of the worst defensive teams in the league. Uh, it's just an absolute mismatch. So uh, one Ian Gabriel's listed as questionable in this one. Certainly keep your eyes on that. If he's out, we can see Stanley Johnson, Taylor Horton Tucker, Trevor Reza get even more run than they already were. Uh, Taylor Horton Tucker at 4-1 becomes pretty intriguing if that's the case, if he's actually going to get that run. But 
I would expect Malik Monk to be my favorite play. Uh, I said it last time out. He put up 42 DraftKings points. He's going to continue to be a phenomenal play in the mid-5K range with no LeBron, no Anthony Davis. That's just too cheap. Same can be said for Carmelo Anthony. The minutes really haven't been there for him, though. Uh, they're choosing to run out other guys. Russell Westbrook at 8-6 has not been the most efficient, but his points, rebounds, and assists upside all around is going to be fantastic with there being no LeBron now. So if you want to go there, uh, I wouldn't call you crazy, but he's definitely not my favorite option. I'd much rather go to the cheaper guys, such as a Stanley Johnson, such as an Austin Reeves. I think Stanley Johnson's by far my top option for as far as like upside at his price tag uh, in this type of a game environment. So he is certainly someone that I would be looking to get some exposure to uh, in my tournament lineups. And as far as anyone else that's really standing out to me, I mean, we already kind of talked about him. Malik Monk's going to be by far my favorite option as far as like upside at his price tag. And then running it back on the other side, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's Donovan Mitchell. It's Rudy Gobert as your top two options. Rudy Gobert continues to be priced very friendly. Um, this is a matchup where I would not be scared to target him for sure. So I think he could have a big game. Donovan Mitchell, same thing. It's just a matter of if the game stays close. If it doesn't, I tend to lean towards going with Jordan Clarkson, Mike Conley as secondary options. They're priced in the low 6K range. Uh, if they can have efficient minutes, if the game does turn into a blowout, even though they don't get a full allotment of run, they could still get you there at their price tag in comparison to Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, who will probably end up falling short if the game does indeed turn into a blowout. So that's my overall breakdown for the game by game. We've got to talk about Fandor real quick, though, talk about some pricing discrepancies. As always, I just like to take a quick look, see if there's anyone we talked about that's really standing out as a you know, much better play over here. Um, Karis LeVert continues to be a fantastic play on both websites, so he's a guy we already talked about, but he's only 5-2 over here on FanDuel. Um, getting that, you know, mid to upper 30s minutes and run does look like a, a great play. Uh, Rudy Gobert, we just talked about him at 7-8. He's priced very friendly on both price, uh, on both websites. I mean, this is a guy that typically you're looking to pay all the way up into like the 8-9K range at times throughout the season, so I think 7-8 is very reasonable. He's playing in the upper 30s and minutes for games that are competitive. Uh, we know he's a rebounding monster, so getting a lot of those rebounds certainly not going to hurt your feelings. Um, the Chicago Bulls guys continue to be priced very reasonably over here. Like all three of them just seem to pop out every single day for me. So getting some exposure to uh, two or three of the big three which certainly makes sense. Demar Derozan at eight three, Nikola Vucevic at seven seven, Zach Levine at seven four. Uh, just priced very very reasonably. Fanduel's making it hard on us to not want to get exposure. Payup options, obviously, I talked about them, but I mean, the milwaukee Brooklyn game is a fantastic game environment. Chris Middleton at 7.5 looks really good for me in my projection model. Uh, Drew Holiday at 8.5, Giannis Antetokounmpo at 11.9, Kevin Durant at 10.9, um, Kyrie Irving at 9.6. You get a nice discount on him over here on FanDuel in comparison to DraftKings, so certainly makes it a lot easier to want to get a ton of exposure to him over here on FanDuel. Uh, and yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff we talked about already, of course, but I mean, Donovan Mitchell's 8-1. That's a very friendly price tag over here on FanDuel. So they're making it kind of easy on you to want to get to Donovan Mitchell. I mean, he's priced cheaper than guys like, you know, Darius Garland, Kyrie Irving, Paul George. Uh, Cade Cunningham's even priced up higher than Donovan Mitchell at this point, which is kind of a surpriser to, to me. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're pretty similar, but typically, you know, Donovan Mitchell has a little bit more name value. You'd kind of expect him to be priced up a little bit more. Um... And yeah, just trying to make sure there's not anyone I'm missing, but a lot of what we went over applies and a lot of the guys that are priced cheap enough to where it's a big difference I just talked about. So uh, that is my overall breakdown of this five game slate, guys. If you enjoyed, it would be greatly appreciated if you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. And uh, before I let you guys go, as always, got to give you my lock of the night. Let's get into it and my lock of the night tonight is going to be Giannis Antetokounmpo taking on this Brooklyn Nets squad in this high total this is a big don't overthink it spot a 239 and a half over under Giannis Antetokounmpo second best fantasy point per minute producer in the league putting up 1.72 Fandle points per minute as far as drafts is concerned 1.76 DraftKings points per minute and this is a spot where the guy legitimately has 100 plus fantasy point upside if he's able to take advantage in this game environment. Going to see in the upper 30s most likely rather than the low 30s. Get him in your lineups because he is my lock of the night. So there we go guys, Giannis Antetokounmpo, get him in your lineups. And that is all from me in this one. 
If you do enjoy the content, it would be greatly appreciated if you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. If you want to check out the premium content packages, head on over to patreon.com slash kjk underscore DFS. Link below in the description. I got a bunch of other stuff linked below as well. Merch store just drops a new merch over there if you're interested. And uh, that's all from me. I'll be dropping a prize picks video later on. If you haven't signed up for prize picks, check them out. Use that promo code KJKDFS to receive an instant match deposit up to $100. Wishing you all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.